What are you looking for? My brain. I'm gonna make this smoothie. You're looking for your brain? Yeah. How is it? It's missing. It's missing? Oh no. Oh no. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Missing brain, no good. Too inconvenient. Super inconvenient. Thank you, Zoe. Hey, Renee. Hello, hello. Morning, hey, Grace. We're shaking bacon. Perfect timing, I love perfect timing. That is a win. I love perfect timing. How's everyone doing this morning? It's lunchtime. Oh, it's lunchtime. Listen and eat. Yes. Hey, Charlie. Ooh, is Addie on here? Addie just completed a 150 day streak on Duolingo. It just alerted me. Is she here this morning? I don't know if she is, but she just got a big streak. We should congratulate her. Does anyone else on here Duolingo? Y'all know I do. Hey, Liz. Look at, I'm all windswept. <laughs> yep. All right, we are going to read chapter 12. I should all get it on it for German so I can learn random words. That makes sense. You're on an 18 day streak. You can do it, Renee. Get to 20, get to 20 days. Wait, before I start reading, does anyone want to guess what my streak is? I don't think I've ever told you guys. Do you want to guess what my streak is? <coughs> Secret Boyfriend, don't say it, because he knows. He knows what my streak between is. Between one and 5,000. I mean, that's true. It's somewhere between those. Hey, Abby. Guess, guess, guess. Hi, Ellie. We're guessing what my uh, my dual lingo streak is. Grace guessed one year. Is she right? Uh, can we give hints though? You can give a hint. Is she right or is she wrong? She's wrong. Can She's I say wrong. Which, in which direction? Oh, somebody went over. Okay, uh, so Grace said one year, Renee said 120, Abby said 675. It's, it's between all of those. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> He's right. It's between all of those. <laughs> Someone said 225. Grace said 444. Ellie said five or six years. No, it's not five or six years. It is between 444 and 675. 555. This is funny. I'll just tell you. I'm at 603 today. Today is day 603. It's so a pretty solid, it's not 675, but it's a solid, it's a respectable amount of time. It's respectable. Almost two years, right? It's almost two full years, yes. My friend Jenny and I started it one, uh, three months before we were gonna go to Italy. That's why. Because mm -hmm. she flew to Italy with me when I, when I moved there. Um, well, she flew from where she lives and I flew from Oregon and we met in um, Germany, actually, at the airport. Um, and they had mediumly okay coffee. And then I ran over to meet her when she landed. And then we had a layover. I landed at like one in the morning. I was tired. Uh -oh. uh, dinner reason, I thought you started longer ago than that. Yeah, why am I not getting notifications? I don't know, Tiffany. I don't know. Probably because Becca's not here to give them out to everyone. All right, well, anyway, let's get started. So does anyone know how to pronounce this? It's that famous castle in Germany. It's Neuschwanstein, is that right? I don't actually know. Does anyone know how to pronounce Neuschwanstein? Darling, Neuschwanstein? Neuschwanstein. <laughs> Do you think that's correct? Could be, right? You are part German. It's true. Just say it angrily and it'll sound right. <laughs> but it's a fairy tale. It's still German. <laughs> okay. When will you have slime made? Uh, soon. Mine was better. Oh, shots fired. Wow. Pew, pew, pew. wow. Wow. 
<laughs> Charlie fired shots. That's fair. All right. <clears throat> so we're reading chapter 12. The Secrets of Neuschwanstein Castle. The train from Monte Carlo arrived in Munich at six o'clock the next morning after making a few stops along the way. They tried sleeping as much as they could, but they didn't manage much rest. <coughs> Connor and Bree made sure Pearl was safely aboard the train that would take her home before they left the train station. When Connor and Bree left Germany two days prior, neither thought that they would be returning so soon. And just like every other city they'd seen so far, Munich proved to be a world of its own. It was a city of spires and clock towers and pointed roofs. It, they were beautiful buildings with stained glass windows and handcrafted wooden doors. Statues of religious and mythical figures were mounted, thank you so much, on the roofs and balconies to keep watch over the busy streets. <coughs> mm. So good. Yes, Kofifi. Can't survive the day without it. Yes, yes, yes. So good. Good job. Excellent coffee. I can't believe how close these countries are, and yet they're all so different, Connor said. Yeah, and you really don't know a place until you've been there, Bree said. You can look at a hundred pictures and a dozen maps, but unless you've been to the city and felt its pulse, you really know nothing about it. Connor couldn't have put it in better words himself. With no time to lose, they brainstormed how they were going to get from Munich to Neuschwanstein Castle. Well, I've got some bad news, Connor said. We're almost out of cash. I've got enough for food for a couple of days, but that's it. I don't know how we're supposed to get to the castle now. Don't worry, I've got an idea, Bree said. Let's find a hotel and pretend we're staying there, and then we'll trick the concierge into giving us what we need. Let me guess, that happens in crime books too, Connor asked. No, I figured this one out myself, Bree said proudly. My grandma lives in a condo in Atlantic City next to a bunch of hotels, and there are summers that I never once paid for lunch. They walked up and down the stone streets until Bree found a large fancy hotel ideal for her plan. The hotel was painted yellow and had the flags of several different countries displayed around its revolving doors. They pushed through the doors and Bree got in line to speak with someone at the front desk. Connor waited a few feet behind her. She said she was confident enough to do it alone, or perhaps she just didn't want him hovering over her. Guten Morgen, guten Dank, Frau, the man said at the concierge, at the concierge desk. Uh, good morning, it's good to see you too, she said, even though she thought she had never seen this man before in her life. I was wondering if I received any messages while I was out. Uh, oh, the concierge said. He looked awfully confused, like he could have sworn they had never met. Well, what's room number? What are you going to do a role for Slime Live tonight? There's a role for Slime Live tonight, Emma. Um, oh, no, wait, sorry, not tonight. This evening there's one, and then tomorrow there's one. Yeah. Um, I actually have to babysit my niece and nephew tonight, so there's not going to be one tonight tonight, but there'll be one this afternoon and one tomorrow. Yes, yes. Uh, and what is your name? Bree Campbell, she said honestly and acted a little hurt that he hadn't remembered. But as you should know, the room is under my stepfather's name. Uh, Herr Huber is your stepfather, he asked. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, is that the name he checked in under? Bree said with a massive eye roll. <laughs> Please ignore him. He's from Milwaukee. Every time we go someplace new, he likes to trick the locals into thinking he's one of them. He probably checked in with some ridiculous accent too. Now, about those messages. Oh yes, of course, the concierge said and went through the papers on his desk. Uh, no messages for room 723. Brie pouted and stuck out her bottom lip. Not even from Jacob, she asked sadly. Connor did a double take. Who the heck was Jacob? No, I'm sorry, he said. Oh, that's a shame, she said and got down to business. Well, since I'm here, I was wondering if you could tell me the easiest way to Neuschwanstein Castle. My dad has to work all day and I have nothing to do. Uh, there is a two-hour bus that can take you there, he said. Unfortunately, it's already sold out for today and tomorrow. Connor slumped after hearing this, but Bree quickly thought of a plan B. Does this hotel rent bikes, she asked. Well, yes, madame, the concierge said. He was very happy to give her some good news finally. Well, terrific. I suppose a bike ride around the countryside will have to do. One bike? Mm, make it two, Bree said. And charge it to your room, he said. Yes, please, Bree said. And if you could please leave a note for my dad telling him I went on a short bike ride, I would really appreciate it. Oh, well, yes, I'd be happy to, the concierge said. I'll have those bikes brought around front of the hotel right away. Well, thank you so much, Bree said. Connor had almost forgotten that Bree wasn't actually staying there. He tapped his foot to get her attention. 
We need to know how to get there, he whispered. Oh, yeah, and one last thing, Bree said to the concierge. Would you mind highlighting how to get to New Washington Castle on the map for me, just in case I can convince my dad to take me there himself when he's finished with work? The concierge nodded and highlighted the route for her on the small map. She thanked him again and then waited with Connor in front of the hotel for the bikes to be brought out. You're really good at that, Connor said, like scarily good. Bree's head was lost in the map. Okay, judging from this map, the castle is roughly 80 miles away, meaning that we're going to be on these bikes all day, she said. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, no, Connor said, looking at the suitcase he'd been lugging around the entire trip. What am I supposed to do with Betsy? Oh, just check her at the front desk and tell them that you're with me, Bree said and handed him her bag to store as well. I guess this is the part where we part, old girl, he said sadly. He removed the piece of the mirror from the suitcase and put it in his jacket pocket. He had just realized now, with being in Munich, he had taken Betsy on as many adventures as Bob had before him. He took her back inside and checked her into room number 723, not knowing if he would ever see her again. A man from the hotel brought Connor and Bree each a bike and they began their long ride to Neuschwanstein Castle. Bree took the task of leading. She steered her bike with one hand while constantly looking at the map with the other. It took them an hour or so to pedal away from the Munich traffic and enter the German countryside. As soon as they did, the magnificent Alps came into view. They were unbelievably tall, as if they had been painted against the sky. Their sharp and jagged peaks were sprinkled with snow like the white of an old man's beard. They stood imperially like a giant soldiers, like giant soldiers guarding their homeland. As they rode deeper into the scenery, the ground rose with the Alps altitude. Connor and Bree looked out in wonder at the grassy hills around them. They were convinced Germany was the greenest place on earth. They've obviously never been to Scotland. Shots fired. Yeah, well. Oh, yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, no. What do you do? Um, probably not anything. Oh. What? Water? Smoothie? Coffee. Beverage goblin. Are we playing charades? <laughs> Occasionally a village appeared beside the road. Each was more picturesque than the last, with their orange roofs set against the high backdrop of the azure sky behind the Alps. The scenery was so beautiful that it didn't seem real. Connor never knew the world could be so gorgeous with every mile of their journey. He saw something that reminded him of the land of stories and just how much he missed it. Will you have a chance to upload chords to YouTube the last one? Which, yes, yes, I will today, Tiffany. I will do that. Um, clouds began to roll from behind the mountain peaks that covered the countryside like thick, fluffy gray ceilings. It was hard to tell where the mountains ended and where the clouds started. After a few hours of biking, Connor and Bree pulled into a tiny town called Abenberengau to get a bite to eat. Every one of the cottage-like homes and shops were painted with a mural of fairy tale and religious art as if they were one and the same. Connor and Bree stopped to admire an adorable house painted with iconic scenes from the story of Little Red Riding Hood. I could never tell Red about this, Connor said. She's already got a huge head. I can't imagine how she'd act if she knew she was painted on one of the buildings in the other world, too. They were delighted to see how well the well-represented fairy tales were in the center of town. There were statues of trolls and Humpty Dumpty, shops filled with toys and trinkets and puppets with all the classic storybook characters. There was even a small inn called Hotel Wolf, where Connor and Bree chose to eat. I feel like we're eating in Red Riding Hood Kingdom, Connor said over lunch. If these people only knew what we know, Bree said. Connor looked down at his food. Yeah, he mumbled sadly. What's the matter with you? Bree asked. He was hesitant to tell her what was on his mind. I would never want anything to happen to my sister or grandmother or anyone in the land of stories, he said. But there's a part of me that hopes that the portal does open so that I can see them all again. Bree smiled gently. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, she said. We'll just try to think of the situation as a win-win. If the portal is closed, your friends are safe. And if it's open, at least you'll get to see them again. Yeah, well, we're being attacked by thousands of French soldiers, Connor said. Well, maybe the soldiers changed their mind. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All good? Smoothie 
dance complete. Dance. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's my only dance skill. Smoothie dance is all I've got. Mm -hmm. Maybe the soldiers changed their mind while they were in the portal, Bree said. 200 years is a long time for self-reflection. They could have rethought their whole universal domination thing. Maybe, he shrugged. How many pages do you read a day? We read one chapter of this book per day. Maybe, he shrugged, but they both knew it was a slim chance. Connor appreciated her optimism nonetheless. He wished he could live a life where there wasn't a cost or a choice. He wished for once that when someone said, and they lived happily ever after, that they actually meant it. They finished their eating and continued the journey to the castle. It was impossible to keep track of time since the sun was hidden by the clouds. A few hours later, just as their bums and feet started aching from biking all day, they arrived in the village of Hoshwashenstockengog. I wish that was a joke. Connor and Bree could see the tips of the towers belonging to Neuschwanstein Castle, hidden by the trees in the hills above the village. It felt like a giant peak, or excuse me, it felt like a giant was peeking at them. Thank you. We made it, Bree said cheerfully, and it only took us uh, nine and a half hours. Only? Connor asked, groaning as he dismounted his bike. I think I'm gonna have bike I'm gonna have a bicycle seat shape dented into my butt for the rest of my life. <laughs> Secret boyfriend relates to Connor apparently on a deep level. Do you have a bicycle seat shape in your butt, babe? Uh, I would if I did the Connor instead. <laughs> That's fair. Have you ever ridden a bike for nine hours? Uh, no, I've ridden a bike for half of that and it was not a fun time. Try not to laugh, but I'll be smoothie. Okay. Hohish Washingog was an incredibly tiny place and mainly consisted of restaurants, inns, and souvenir shops for tourists visiting New Washington Castle. We need to go back to a country where I can pronounce the words. Liz said we wrote a lot in Stowe. What's that mean? I'll make stuff up. Stowe? Where's Stowe? Like Vermont? Ohio. Oh. Stowe, I didn't know that. Ohio. Okay. Even then, those were nine hours. No, no, definitely not nine hours. Um... The village was also home to another small and older castle that set across the hill from New Washington. It was square and golden and almost completely forgotten by the travelers roaming the village. Glass kiosks lined the center of the village and sold tours of New Washington. I really need to know how to pronounce it. Hey, Anya. A long line of tourists waited outside for buses that took them up the path of the hills to the castle. Okay, I think I've got a plan, Connor said. We'll go in on a tour of the castle and stay at the very back of the group so that we're easily forgettable. When no one's looking, we'll find the perfect place to hide. And then, at night, when all the guides and the guests have gone, we'll give ourselves a tour of the castle and try to find the portal. That sounds like an excellent plan, Bree said. They chained their bikes to the bike rack and went to purchase their tickets. But as they walk up to the kiosk, a sign in writing in many languages was placed in the window side. Alan Turin, but Schlossen, Nuschen, Washenstein, so unfair, dead, dead, rest, red, awesome, cloth. All tours of Neus Washington Castle are sold out for the rest of the day. Tous les billets pour de la vista de tout château de Neus Washington und et vous pour le reste de la journée. Tout est tourné de Neus Washington Castello sono eroti per il resto de la giornata. Oh no, Connor exclaimed. What are we supposed to do now? Let's see if we can get a better look at the castle. Bree said. Maybe there's a window or something we can sneak into. Babe, you know what they're going to do? They're going to scale the castle. I can feel it. Like we tried to do or well, well, wanted to. Scale the castle we have a scale the castle video. We have two. We were talking about this yesterday. We have a video that we still haven't posted where I was going to scale the castle, but I didn't. You, well, you mused on how easy it would be, and I disagree. Listen, he doesn't think that I could climb the side of a castle, and I think I'm a very good climber. Right? I've never seen you climb the side of a castle. No, but you've seen me climb I, other I'll things. Take your word for it, yes. I, I can climb. Liz <laughs> believes in me. Grace believes in me. They think I can scale the castle. What are you going to do about the people at the top? I How told you, they're going to be dead because we're going to shoot arrows at them. It's hard to hit people over castle walls with arrows, but. 
They're gonna drop boiling stuff on you. It's gonna be bad. Time. I'm gonna wait till all the boiling stuff is gone. And there are climbing spikes. No, I told you already. We can get over the spikes. They were so small. Uh, small spikes. Geez. Grace has a bow that she'll loan me. <laughs> well, yeah. when we post the videos, they can decide how defensible these castles are. The one in Edinburgh was too defensible. The one in Sky, we could take him. Maybe. Sonia and Raina both have bows. See, now I've got three bows. What are you going to do with three bows? Shoot these people that are defending the castle. How do you need more than one bow? For you. <laughs> Aren't you back up? I'll go. Europe has so many castles, they don't even care. I bet they'd let you in easily. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They let us in our castle without having to scale them. Yeah, we just bought a ticket. Except for Edinburgh. Right. Well, they, they did have this sign outside that said all tickets are sold out for the day. This is actually, they did have a sign like this. It really did. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't in multiple languages, though. It was only in English. Yeah. All right. Anyway, they walked down the road a little way from the village and more of the castle's towers came into view. It's no use looking from down here. We'll have to go up to the hill and get a closer look, Connor said. He tried his best to fight the disheartening thoughts creeping over him, but the situation wasn't looking great. If the street below the castle was that crowded, the castle must be packed with people. It would be impossible to snoop around without looking suspicious. Connor closed his eyes and prayed for a miracle. They just needed a way inside the castle. That was all. The fate of the fairy tale world depended on what they might find inside. And luckily for Connor, there was still a bit of magic in his blood, and it must have been listening to his request. Hey... Connor, Bree whispered, that kid over there keeps staring at us. Connor turned in the direction she was referring to. A few yards beside the road was a tiny cottage-like house. A boy sat in its front steps, unapologetically watching them. He was very young, no older than ten, and he had dark hair and very pale skin. He was skinny, although his cheeks were plump and rosy, making him look like a puppet that lived in a cuckoo clock. Hi, Connor said and waved awkwardly at their observer. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Hello, the boy said in a cute German accent. Are you guys American? That's not a German accent, Sasha. That's not even close. <laughs> we are, Bree said, a big grin stretched between his rosy cheeks and he giddily sat up. Do you like the United States? Connor asked him. Yes, the boy said with an animated nod. That's where all the superheroes are from. Is this French? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Have you ever been there? Bree asked. The boy's shoulders sank. No, he said. I go to school in Fusen down the road, but other than that, I have never been far from here. But I am saving all my money so I can visit Gotham City one day. Connor and Bree looked at each other like he was a precious puppy that they wanted to keep. What's your name? Connor asked. They walked up closer to his house and to visit with him some more. My name is Emmerich. He was happy to tell them. Emmerich Helmelnlock. What are your names? I'm Connor, and this is my friend Bree. What brings you to Hoshenwashengood? He asked and then quickly corrected himself. Oh, that was a silly question. You're here to see the castle, right? Everybody wants to see the castle. Yes, Bree said. Have you been inside? Uh, many, many, many times, he told them. My grandfather used to give tours of the castle and my mother works at the gift shop in the village. So there isn't anything I don't know about the place. Ah, uh, well, we were here to see the castle, Connor said dejectedly. We rode bikes all the way from Munich, but the tickets are sold out. That completely blew Emmerich's mind, and he almost fell over here. You rode bikes all the way from Munich? He said with enormous gestures. Uh, why would you do that? And suddenly an idea came to Connor's mind. He looked at Bree. She could see the light in his eyes, and she was prepared to go along with whatever he was thinking. Well, we would tell you, but we wouldn't want to endanger you, Connor said. Yeah, you're far too young, Bree added. Emmerich's eyes grew, and his mouth fell open. Tell me what? He asked. I'm afraid we can't tell you, Connor said. It would blow our cover if anyone were ever to find out. What are you covering up? Emmerich asked, desperate to know. You can tell me. I don't have any friends to tell. Connor and Bree looked at each other. They had him right where they wanted him. Well, we came to Germany to hide something, Connor said. We were hired by the United States government because no one would ever suspect kids traveling with it. Emmerich put his hand on his cheeks. Hands on his cheeks. The curiosity was eating him alive. What are you trying to hide? He asked. Connor pulled the pan pipe from his jacket pocket and showed it to him. This? Emmerich gasped, knowing what it was. Wait. What is that? It looks like a pan pipe, but it's actually a weapon, Bree said. And a very bad man 
wants to get his hands on it. And you want to hide it in a walking wog and gong? <laughs> I'm exhausted. They nodded. We're going to hide it in the castle, Connor said. There's no way anyone would ever suspect it, but as such a historical item, and there aren't any more tours today, well, we'll just have to hide it somewhere else. Sorry to bother you, Emmerich, Bree said, but we really need to get going now. We need to be out of the country by nightfall so they don't find us. They turned to leave, but Emmerich ran to stand in front of them. No, wait, please, he said. I can take you into New Washington if you want. But how can you do that, Connor asked. Emmerich looked around to make sure no one could hear him. I know a secret passage into the castle, he explained. My grandfather took me there once. Connor and Bree's spirits soared hearing this, but they had to remain calm to keep their cover. I don't know. I would hate to put your life in danger, Emmerich, Bree said. But, but I am putting my own life in danger by offering, he pleaded. Please, I can keep an eye on it for you after you leave, even. They took a few steps away and huddled with their backs to him, pretending to think it over. You're a genius, Bree whispered to Connor. What are the chances that we find someone who could lead us to a secret passage in the castle? Yeah, what are the chances? Connor whispered back with a smile. He knew how deep down there was a bit of fairy magic inside of him, although he never would have admitted it openly. They forced their excitement to fade from their faces and went back to Emmerich. All right, Emmerich, if you promise never to tell anyone about this, you can take us into the castle, Connor said. Emmerich jumped up and down. This was the most exciting thing that had ever happened to him in his young life. I knew there was something special about you, he said. I've seen enough movies to know the secret agents when I see one. When do you want to go? Uh, sometime after dark. Bree said, so no one will see us there. Great, I can meet you at Mary's Bridge after dinner in an hour or two, Emmerich said. My mom will kill me if I miss dinner, even if it was to help save the world. Sounds good, Connor said. Where's Mary's Bridge? It's up the pass to the castle, Emmerich said. There are signs to guide you. You cannot miss it. It's the best view of the castle. Why am I French? Good Lord, I can't do German, you guys. It's just not happening. Terrific, we'll meet you there. Emmerich was bouncing and his cheeks were extra rosy. I can't wait, he said. But then he became very still when another thought occurred to him. If I'm leaving after dinner, I'd better clean my room before my mother gets home. He ran past them and hurried up to the steps of the house. Connor and Bree sighed with relief at the same time. So far, we've run away from our principal, kidnapped an old lady, lied to a concierge, tricked an innocent German boy into believing we're secret agents, Bree listed. Does that make us bad people? Nah, Connor said, shaking his head. Sometimes you have to do the wrong thing for the right reason. Now let's go check out this bridge. I'm anxious to see this castle. They returned to the village and followed up the road to the castle. There were many signs pointing to various things that could be seen in the hills, but they followed the arrows that led to Marienbrücke, Mary's Bridge. The bridge was very long and narrow. It was wood with an iron railing and stretched from one cliff to another. Several tourists braved the bridge and took pictures of the mountains and the forests around it. Connor and Bree faced mild cases of vertigo during their first steps onto the bridge. They weren't expecting to see a waterfall in a stream hundreds of feet below. When they got to the middle of the bridge, they looked out and saw New Washington Castle in its entirety for the first time. Oh my gosh, Brie gasped and put her hands over her mouth. I, I can't, I can't, can't, I can't believe I'm seeing this right now, Connor stuttered. It was easy to believe New Washington Castle was referred to as one of the wonders of Europe. It was a massive white structure with thousands of windows, dozens of tall towers, pointed roofs, sharp spirals, the color of the night sky, and the castle sat on a stone base surrounded by trees at the peak of the hill which made it look like it was growing out of the mountainside. Connor had seen many impressive structures in the land of stories, but never in his own world. Nuzhwashenstein Castle had been built brick by brick with the hands of man, using no magic whatsoever. I would say this is amazing, but that would be a massive understatement, he said. You're right. There really are no words, Bree said. It's funny that we're the only ones who know that there's a portal into a fairy tale world inside there. You'd think it'd be obvious. Connor couldn't agree more. The luscious green mountains surrounding it and the lakes clear reflecting the gray thick clouds in the sky. The small villages miles into the horizon made him feel like he was looking at something otherworldly. It was as if a piece of the fairy tale world had penetrated through the seam of the other world and it had been named Bavaria. The few short hours that they waited for Emmerich to arrive went by quickly as they took in the sights around them. Night had fallen over the German countryside and the tourists slowly disappeared until Connor and Bree were the last ones on the bridge. They saw a small light in the trees, and soon Emmerich emerged, walking towards them with a flashlight in his hand. Good Abend, Emmerich said. Are you ready to explore the castle? You have? You've been to it, Liz? That's amazing. Liz has been to the castle. She's been all over here. I know, but to this castle specifically. 
in college, apparently. <coughs> Emmerich led them to a path that crisscrossed down the hillside to an observation deck near the waterfall. They crawled over the railing of the deck, and when they followed the stream all the way down to the bottom of the hill that the castle was perched on, careful, don't get your shoes wet, he warned them. They got closer to the hill, and the farther they went, followed the stream into the land beside it, like an overflowing bathtub. The bridge, the castle, the mountains all disappeared from view behind the thick trees that surrounded the base of the hill. Built into the side of the hill, disguised by a large layer of dirt and rocks, was a round door. Emric felt around for its steel handle and then heaved the door open. This way, he said happily. Connor and Bree crawled through the door after him and into a long stone tunnel. The tunnel twisted and turned for what felt like miles under the castle. Without Emric's flashlight, it would have been pitch black. Eventually, the three arrived at the end of the tunnel, and Emmerich pushed through another circular door into a small storage room of the gift shop. This used to be the servants' quarters, Emmerich said. They'll stay close behind me. I have to go punch in the code before the alarm goes off. They went past the gift shop into a hall dedicated to the history of the castle's construction and design. A large replica of the castle sat in the middle of the hall, and the walls were covered with photos of the castle being built and illustrations of its early concept art. Emmerich found a keypad behind one of the photos and typed in a long code. A green light blinked when he was finished. Noosh Washenstein is ours, he said. See, if a 10-year-old can break in, so can I. Just saying. All right, Emmerich, take us on a tour, Connor said. We want to see everything. Emmerich marched them down the hall of the spiral stairs, and the, lavish castle the, the lavishness of the castle began. The circular walls around the staircase were covered with wallpaper patterned with dragons and symbols they didn't recognize. This place gives me the creep, Connor said. Me too, Brick said. I love it. A lot of people think that it's haunted, Emrick said. Many visitors have claimed to see ghosts moving past the windows at night or hear sounds coming from the inside when it's completely empty. Connor gulped and Brie grinned. At the top of the stairs, they passed a statue of a dragon standing like an overgrown watchdog guarding the hallway. I'll show you the throne room first, Emrick said and guided them down the hallway. Every inch of the hall was decorated with papers of diamonds, checkers, or floral designs. Pillars with an animal carving sat in the archways of the window. Each window was lined with gold. The colors may have faded over the years, but the castle remained a spectacle even more than a century later. Emmerich escorted them through the open doorway and into the throne room. It had a towering domed ceiling. A gigantic chandelier that hung from the ceiling was rimmed with hundreds of wax candles. The walls were covered in beautiful paintings of mythological and religious figures. Every species of the animal kingdom appeared in a mosaic on the floor as if the circle of life was right under their feet. Colorful arches and pillars surrounded the throne room. Balconies wrapped around the top of the room, facing a high platform under a large mural of Jesus Christ. The platform was perfectly placed for a throne room, but it was empty. Um, so if this is the throne room, where's the throne? Bree asked. He never had one, Emmerich said. King Ludwig II had an extravagant throne made to match this room, but he was declared insane before it was finished. So the king never got to sit on his throne, Connor asked. That's tough. Most of the castle remains unfinished, Emmerich said. Ludwig was spending all of Bavaria's money to build his luxurious homes, and that's what began running out when he started borrowing money from other countries to complete them. I could see how that might lead to a bad reputation, Bree said. Connor had been studying every square inch of the castle as they went, searching for anything that could possibly be the portal, but he wasn't finding anything that rang a bell in the throne room. Do you think this room would be a good place for the weapon? Emmerich whispered, even though they were the only ones in the castle. No, not in here, Connor said. Let's keep looking. I'll show you King Ludwig's bedroom next, Emmerich said. They followed him back into the hall in a pair of heavy, through a heavy, pair of heavy wooden doors. The king's bedroom was covered from floor to ceiling in remarkable wooden craftsmanship. Everything from the washstand to the desk to the bed frame displayed intricate carvings of dis disciples, nobility, and the harvest. Murals of Tristan and Isolde, one of the king's favorite stories, covered the areas of the wall not decorated in wood. And then they took a quick look at a small artificial grotto tucked between two rooms. It was as if the king had kept a tiny cave in his closet, but even that wasn't appealing enough for Connor. See any places that work? Emmerich asked. Bree was just as interested. She wasn't entirely sure what they were supposed to be looking for either. However, it wasn't something Connor could explain. 
Part of recognizing the portal was being able to feel it. No, not yet, Connor said. I'll know it when I see it. Then I'll take you to the singer's hall next. There are many things to see there, Emmerich said. They returned to the spiral staircase and walked up to the fifth floor of the castle. They walked into the singer's hall and the first thing they heard was the sound of footsteps echoing back at them. The hall was by far the largest room in the castle and stretched long and wide. The singer's hall was such an overstimulating sight that it took Connor and Bree a few moments to differentiate all the artwork. The whole hall seemed to blend into one giant piece of art composed of paintings, statues, busts, carvings, engravings, and symbols of King Ludwig's favorite myths and legends. There were depictions of knights in shining armor, damsels in distress, royal weddings, and punishment of evildoers. Candelabras lined the perimeter of the room while the enormous chandeliers hung from the high ceiling. Bree was looking up at a woman in one of the portraits. Has anyone ever noticed that that old woman in a por that portrait looks like she's being tricked into something? She asked. Mm, they still use this room, Emmerich said. They fill it with chairs and instruments and put on concerts and performances to this day. It would be a convenient place to store your pan pipe. Hearing this struck a chord with Connor. Emmerich was right. It would make sense for the pan pipe to be affiliated with this room. If Connor had built the castle, it would certainly have put a pan pipe that gave access to a portal in a room that had something to do with music. The portal had to be in the singer's hall. He could feel it. At the far side of the room was a platform four steps high. Four pillars of dark red marble stood on the front of the platform and held three colorful arches above them. Behind the pillars and the arches covering the walls was the largest painting in the room. It was of a majestic forest with trees, flowers, squirrels, deer, and boulders. Connor couldn't take his eyes off this area of the room. The painting looked familiar to him, like a place he had seen with his sister. There was something intriguing and inviting about this that he couldn't explain in words. What's this painting of? Connor said. This is the painting of a magical garden, Emmerick said. I don't know what it's from, though. Connor smiled inside and out. I do, he said, and he looked at Bree. I think I found it. Bree and Emmerich joined him at the back of the room. They stood by his side, and all three of them gazed at the painting behind the pillars. You want to put the weapon in there? Emmerich asked excitedly. Connor decided to tell his young tour guide the truth. Emmerich, it's not really a weapon, and we're not really secret agents. Emmerich looked sadly at the floor. I know, he said, but I thought it would be fun to pretend with you guys. I don't get many chances to have fun with other kids. Everyone who comes to Hushwash and Gog is only here for a day, and then they always leave. It broke Connor and Bree's hearts to hear this. He was the second person on their trip to let them manipulate them, manipulate him due to his or her loneliness. Bree leaned down so that she could look him right in the eyes. Don't worry, Emmerich, she said. We have to check on something now and see if it works. It's going to be much cooler than anything secret agents could show you if it does. Emmerich looked curious. Bree nodded to Connor, and then he took the pan pipe from his jacket. He looked over the notes carved into the back of it and double-checked that he knew which cylinder played which note. The middle cylinder should be C, Bree said. At least, that's how it works on a piano. My mom made me take lessons when I was younger. Well, here goes, Connor said. He blew the first four notes into the pan pipe and paused for a second before blowing the remaining four. They were pure and chilling in the empty castle. The notes echoed through the hall like the noises they had made. Like all the noises they had made, only the notes never stopped. The, only so the sound only increased more and more, causing the whole hall to vibrate. The chandelier above them began to sway and the floor started rumbling. What's happening? Emmerich shouted. He covered his ears and looked all around the hall in absolute horror. Suddenly, a bright flash of light appeared between the two pillars in the center of the platform. The light grew and started to swirl. It became larger. It spun faster. Soon, the entire back of the hall was covered in light. Oh no, Connor said and locked eyes with Bree. It works. We can access it from our side. That means the portal has been reopened and the French soldiers are... The three of them jolted forward against their will. The light had abruptly turned into a swirling vortex and was pulling them inside it. Run! Connor yelled. The three of them ran for the other side of the hall, but the vortex pull was too strong. Ember grabbed Bree and Bree grabbed Connor. Connor grabbed one of the candelabras and bolted to the wall. They dangled in the air as the vortex only grew stronger. Emmerich lost his hold on Bree. Bree lost her grasp with Connor, and Connor's grasp slipped from the candelabra. All three of them flew through the air, and they were sucked into the circling light. Connor, Bree, and Emmerich disappeared into the vortex and vanished 
from New Schwachenstein Castle. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Wild. Wild. We're not in Germany anymore, folks. We're headed back to the land of stories. At least what? I think so. <laughs> what? Um, all right, so I'm gonna try. Okay, so a couple things going on. Um, book club stuff on Patreon is gonna start soon. Um, I'm gonna try to do a slime live this afternoon before I have to go babysit. Zoe and Gustav, but there will be book club tomorrow morning and a roll for slime live tomorrow night. Um, so stay tuned for that. And maybe if we're lucky, Dr. Secret Boyfriend will do some more surgery and we'll get a new amputee to go into the roll for slimes. Who knows? Maybe he'll grace us with his presence. Who knows? I only get surgery if it needs done. Right. Do no harm. That's, that's the yeah, oath. I'm not just chopping limbs off that don't need chopped off that would be insane <laughs> i mean that definitely never happened no. hey becca how are you oh um liz who got the raccoon uh, -huh. uh said to tell you that your special boy is doing well he's thriving uh, in her home he's my special boy yeah he's thriving there that's good yeah i know he'd be okay yeah no she's taking good care of him thank you liz <laughs> all right we'll see you guys later bye guys